Okay, so before we start, I just want to let Toyota owners know this. This is the Powertrack Snow Slip Traction System Installation Guide. It calls for us to remove the differential. And then once that's done, we can remove the pinion uh, out of the carrier uh, like this. If you look at here, it says exposed pinion shaft remove retaining bolt, row pin, and shaft. So what we find out in most Toyotas, okay, and I say most Toyotas, I don't know where this carrier is coming from, but maybe it's a 4.9 inch, I don't know. However, with Toyotas, this doesn't work. And I want to make that statement off the bat with you guys. If you are a Toyota owner and you are looking into uh, installing this no-slip uh, differential uh, locker, I will let you know right off the bat right now that this step does not work here. Okay, this pinion does not come out, will not come out un unless you shave off some of the gears here. So I will let you know that and I'll show you. Okay, So see this <clears throat> uh, right here? This is the pinion shaft right here. See, you see that? It will not come out unless you shave this gear out. Okay, And that's dangerous. I would not recommend you shaving this gear out. So, um, for the advertisement, God bless uh, Power Tracks, but for the advertisement that they uh, advertise on their sites, saying that you don't have to take uh, the ring gear out, that's false. So for Toyotas, you have to remove the ring gear. This is the no slip traction system. By design, it works similar to the Lockright and Spartan Locker but it's designed so that it's quieter and it's more street friendly. Uh, in this video I'm gonna be shooting a little documentary on how I install this onto my 8.4 inch differential. So uh, if you're interested in this video let's do this together have some fun together. So now what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to use my little punch here. I'm going to dimple this side. So look at here. I'm dimpling these so that I will not switch this thing around that way. See, this side has dimples. That side doesn't. So now it's time to remove the bolts here. I'll show you how it looks like once I finish removing them, okay? Okay, so I've removed uh, all the bolts here. And just to recap, I've already checked the patterns here. Okay, and it looks really nice. This is how it looks like. And I've already checked the, uh, uh, the uh, backlash. And this is my measurement here. And I record everything that I've done so far. Pinion preload is 10 to 15 inch pound. To get it turning, backlash for the ring gear, RG, is 0 .008 inch, and uh, the four main bolts is, it took me 110 foot-pound to loosen it. So now it's already loosened. What I'm doing here is I'm using this plastic, uh, rubber mallet, and I'm just hitting it so that I can unseat the uh, thing here so this thing can loose. So now... You can see here, everything here looks really nice. This is the bearing right here. And if you could see here, this is this little thing right here. This is the shim. So I need to remember which shim goes to which side, okay? So on here, I'm going to punch this. I'm going to make one punch here to uh, a dimple here to signify that it goes into the dimple side. So now, if you look at here, I'm gonna take this out too. This side goes to this side. So now I can then remove this uh, uh, ring gear out with the carrier. Okay guys, so I've removed all the ring bolts here. I've also dimpled this spot right here, see that? So that I know exactly that this is the place where it came out from. 
and that's what I'm going to do when I install them, install it back. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, tap this loose from the carrier here so that um, I can remove the, the pinion here. Okay, so as you can see here, I uh, uh, took out the, I was able to punch out the um, ring gear. You can see the, the markings here. This is not damage to the ring gear. It's actually the residue of the brass punch here. You know, you see the right there. I was hitting it like that, that this with a hammer so that it'll loosen from the carrier here. So I'm going to put this right here and I'm going to concentrate on the carrier here. To really get to the uh, pinion here to take it out you have to take out this little dowel that they inserted in here it's a locking pin or dowel once that's done this thing can come out okay so I'm gonna have to work on this to have this thing come out like that okay guys so this is how to uh, punch out this little pin right here uh, so that you can have access to the pinion here see if you don't have a punch you can use something like this a, a drill bit and so what you do is this little hole right here uh, is, is designed so that you could use a punch to punch the pin right here out. So I'm going to show you how to do this. I'm, okay. okay, so it's coming out. So as you can see there, it's coming out just like it should. And then what you need to do is use a plier and pull this thing out. Once that's done, this thing can come out. So this is out. And as you can see here, the pinion here can now slide out easily okay so this pin uh, this pinion goes here so now that's done what you need to do is you need to remove the spider gears here this is how you remove the spider gears here you push this one out like this and then this comes out like that so I'm gonna remember to put it like this and this side here I'm gonna to remember to put it like this on this side and this little washer that goes there. So then this thing should come down. The spider gears have been removed. See this right here? They have been removed and now we just have the housing by itself. So I'm gonna clean this with a uh, brake cleaner and once I clean that, I'm gonna install that. And the direction calls for me to have some sort of a heavy grease so I have some grease up there so I'm gonna use that too so I'm gonna go clean this once I'm done it's dry then I'm gonna take my ring gear so that it can just come over here really easily slip over. My purpose uh, Molly fortified grease it's for uh, disc uh, brake wheel bearings and chassis suspension universal joint and whatnot so I'm gonna use this uh, to apply to here and here and I'm doing I'm gonna be doing the same thing to the other side okay so the direction calls for that for me to lubricate this with grease so that's what I did and it calls for uh, doing it liberally okay. so now it calls for me to insert this unit here into here like that okay guys so now once you got everything lubricated what you do is you insert the the coupler into the sides uh, of the housing here the carrier here okay and the direction calls for that this you, you know this this spot right here it's the widest spot right it needs to point out towards you the direction also calls for us to put these little saddle springs here okay into these holes here so we're going to do that before we do anything else okay so they're inserted into the holes so be careful don't drop them or um, anything like that repeat the same steps to the other side here okay so they are in 
So then, it's time to insert this, like so. Now, when you insert this, okay, I'll show you here. And this, you, you do this side the same way, this coupler the same way. You see this, uh, let's see, the, the widest part is this one right here. See, this thing will not go in like that. This thing is like, like that. This thing is designed so that it'll go in like this, right? But being that this is the other side, I'm gonna hold that. See that, see this mark, this hole right there? It's this directly above this, um, on the other side of this wide uh, teeth right here, okay? And there's a reason for that, or, and uh, direction calls for that. So now I'm gonna insert this here, and I'm gonna turn this little hole right here toward me. It's in. I'm gonna turn this in. See this? Okay. The reason why this is called a pedal gap here is because this little pedal right here. So I'm supposed to align it onto there. Okay, like so. And it should sit in very nicely. So there you go. It sits in very nicely. So you see these little gro grooves right here. That little groove right here. This thing has two pins right here, and this thing right here has two pins on the other side. So we're gonna slide this in like so, and it's gonna go in like this. In like that, and it's gonna go, and it's gonna mesh in like that. Put it right here. Okay, so the direction calls for me to uh, put these springs here together like that. It wants me to put this in here, wedge these two springs into here, like so. And I'm gonna have to use some force. There you go. Okay, so it's in. Okay, so then I'm gonna turn this over to this side, and there's another spring slot here. Put this here spring here into here as well okay hold on because there's tension on that side I'm gonna have to wedge this out a little bit okay. Okay, can you see mm -hmm. okay so it's in, and that's how you make this thing go in. Okay, so let's check the other side. And the other side is in as well. Okay, so you see this right here? This is sort of like a, this thing acts like a feeler gauge. It's so it, it gauges the gaps between these two drivers. So um, you know how this is wide and narrow. Wide, narrow. So the direction calls for me to check it with the narrow side. When it fits in like that, it should not go into the wide, uh, you know, if you make it wide like that, it shouldn't go in. But if you make it narrow like that, it should go in like that. And that's what the direction calls for. It fits, meaning that there's so much grease and tension right here, I have to use a little bit of a elbow grease to make it go in. Um, but I can assure you this thing fits like like that okay so and the direction says that if it doesn't fit or if it's too large then to call the the manufacturer so now we are installing the uh, pinion here and to install the pinion it has to go through this little pinion hole right here okay see this right here this little hole right here we're gonna utilize it it'll go from here it'll go into this hole right here we'll, we're gonna have to use a stopper pin which is this little doodad here right here after we uh centered uh, after we put this inside here or uh, in through here we're going to use this little dowel here as a stopper pin so that this thing won't come out okay so we're going to push this inside like that okay so if you see here i don't know if you could see there right now it's coming through this side right here and uh so what we need to do is we need to use some little um 
persuasive uh, uh, force to make it go in. And so now that it's going in like that, what we're going to do is, see this hole right here? This is that pin. We're going to have to align it. See that hole? We're going to have to align it with this hole so that when we um, make it go in, that it's aligned. And then we just drop this pin in like so. And it's in. So now we're going to punch this all the way in. There you go. So it is locked in. What we're going to do is we're going to punch this into there so that it'll close that little gap right there. This calls for a more powerful uh, screwdriver. And, okay, excuse me. We're going to make it so that it doesn't back out again. See that? So I punched this in here so that that pin would never ever get out. So now here comes the fun part. We're going to put this in the freezer so that it'll shrink. Because you know why? I'll show you this. See this? Doesn't go in. Hmm. So Ooh, we're going to put this in the oven so that it'll expand. expand. We're gonna put this in the freezer so it'll shrink. Okay, so this is my sidekick. Basically, what we did here is we're installing the uh, ring gear back into the carrier. And how we did this, we did it without any press or any special tools. Basically what we did is we took the ring gear and baked it in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. Also placed the carrier in the freezer for about 15 to 20 minutes. Once that's done, we pull them out and we just light, slide them on. And we did that without any special tools. Uh, it just slips on. So uh, he's gonna tighten all of this finger tight first. Once he's done all the uh, all of it, we'll leave it cool, to cool down. Okay. So now what I did is I torqued this to 70 foot pounds. And I put uh, red lock, uh, red Loctite onto it. Okay, so I've uh, installed the race over onto the bearing here. So I'm going to be shimming uh, the carrier. So let's shim this first. pretty tight so remember I dimpled this side and this side has no dimple so dimple goes to dimple so the dimple side goes to the dimple side and it takes some persuasion too on this side okay There you go. So now, we are gonna have to put these uh, bolts in. Okay. okay, so basically, I haven't put Loctite on it. The reason is because I wanna check the pattern first. So I'm tightening this to spec, which is 70 foot pounds of torque. And, okay, that's 70 foot pound. Okay, and once I've uh, tightened this, I want to check the pattern, make sure it's still the same pattern that it was when I first started it, and make sure the backlash is okay as well. So, yeah, 0 .008. So we are dead on. So now we're going to check the, we are going to check the pattern. Okay, so let's see. And the pattern's still the same. Uh, that's the ideal pattern that we're looking at. 
Yep, so everything's still the same guys. So what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna take out this again, take all of these out, the four bolts here, and I'm gonna put Loctite on it so that they won't come out again. Okay, so now that we have this unit here set up, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be installing this unit underneath there. 